Welcome to The Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzor Mosi Thurlow scale, or MOTS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Guten Tag, comrades, and welcome back to Lost Signals Discusses. Film and TV. I'm mixing them both, I know. <laughs> and uh, I am your host, Scott Thurlow. I am your commandant, in fact. And I'm here with Jonathan Ian Mander. We all look forward to the day where we don't need Adolf Hitler any longer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Stephen Omosi. Yeah, but, uh, I do, although in the meantime, I do enjoy taking the piss out of him. Mm-hmm. And Chris Morgan. Guten Tag. Yes. And so we are going to discuss and review Jojo Rabbit, the recent uh, Taika Waititi outing. Uh, satire that's getting a, a rather bit of acclaim and praise, and we were certainly looking forward to see it, so we finally have done that, and we're about to talk about it. Stevo, I believe you have a very funny logline for, for us. Yeah, uh, are you there, Hitler? It's me, Jojo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Amazing Great. job. And with that, E, why don't you tell us the plot of Jojo Rabbit? In the waning days of the Third Reich, a ten-year-old boy named Jojo and his imaginary friend Adolf Hitler are struggling through Nazi youth, in fact, getting wounded in uh, situations there. A freak, a freak grenade accident. Yes. Uh, as, as it's An over-enthusiastic... Uh, yeah. uh, he's at home, and he finds out that his mother, uh, Scarlett Johansson, is basically uh, Anne Franking, if that's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> She's hiding a young Jewish girl. Uh, yeah, right a Jewish girl in uh, a crawl space, and he initially has this ideology of Nazism, but he soon becomes int- bedoves a friendship and love of the young Jewish girl, and he decides that Jews are people too. And fuck off Hitler. Yeah, yeah and literally, yeah, like <laughs> throw, uh, throw him out a yep. window. Uh, and it's, it's a coming-of-age tale, and it's very funny. It has great moments of drama. Now, I'm going to say that I didn't... It took me a little while to get into the movie, hmm. but once I I was very invested in his life, and it takes a, actually a fairly dark turn towards the end, and I I was my eyes were watering at points, and at the very end, I actually shed a tear. My cold oh my god, <laughs> my cold heart in actually ma- shed a tear a human or two. Too. Yes, I, who, who knew? <laughs> and I so I'm going to give this a I, I want to give this a three, but I'm going to give it a... Because I think the, the ending is wonderful mm. and really ties everything together. And you have this journey with Jojo as he matures in perhaps the worst situation to mature. But mm. I because it took me a little while to get into, I'm going to give it a very strong two. But that's my rating. Okay, very nice. Um, I'm looking at a three myself, like... I was sold pretty into, like, from the opening, what, like, maybe like 10 minutes, it's like Jojo getting ready to go to the Hitler youth camp, and he's just, like, running on the streets, happily hail Hitlering everybody, like, it, it's... As you do. Yeah. So, like, I was invested, like, pretty early on, I'm like, I can't, you know, I was long for the ride. Now, looking back on it, it's a good narrative, it's, all the parts come together, like you said, I don't know if it's enough for a three, I still kind of want to give it a three, so I'm at the very least giving a strong two, like you said, and I'll, I'll let you guys make your arguments. What, what are you going to give it? What do you think? I'm without question giving it a three. Okay. Uh, the ending of it, to me, a, an ending can make or break a movie, and I've got a list of like my favorite endings, and this has just made the list. And you're of going my, on it? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. But, but what I'm saying, but the, the, this thing, everybody's like kind of, it, it is a satire, it's not a comedy, and everybody's like, oh, how do you make Hitler funny? And it's like... Hitler is his super ego in a way. It is the it is the ideal that he's reaching for. Yeah, it's an, his imaginary best yeah, friend. Yeah, his, but, yeah, but 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 uh, but at the ending where Hitler rounds the corner, he's got the bullet in his head. I there was like I actually jumped in the theater like that came as a, a shock. But um, it was it's just it, this this uh, this movie is an exercise in restraint. So when he came mm-hmm. in there, I kind of agree with you. I, it took a little while for me to get going, mm-hmm. but as it it built momentum, and I mentioned Rebel Wilson's character before 
the cast and she was almost like the comic relief where she was you know where she was buying into the propaganda she was the most over the top yeah but movie that had a lot of that that would have been a very that is a very difficult role i think it could have been over anything in this movie could have been overdone Mm -hmm. in either way and um the fact that she took that dark turn where she's given the kid a grenade and he goes go over and hug the soldier you know it ca- kind of goes to, speaks to the fact that like i was saying yeah, hitler did put children on the front line in the later days of the war but also hitler as we go along his he becomes less he, he like even when he's joking it becomes darker i mean this everything in this film is subtle so they lay all the pieces and you kind of have an idea of what it is but as the film goes on it starts to it starts to tighten and tighten, and then like everybody shows their true colors. Hmm. Uh, Sam Rockwell's character, you realize that he's really not, you know, really not buying into this bullshit anymore. Um, and like Elsa, turns out, you know, most of her story is kind of like she has this fiance, but he already died of tuberculosis. Um, and um, and, and it's 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 like funny little things like we were talking about. It kind of remind me of Terry Gilliam when the Gestapo comes by and everybody's like doing the. Hell Hitler, hell Hitler. And it's right when like the satire is getting there, Elsie comes up to pretend that she is Jojo's sister and they're like, Hell Hitler. And there's that moment where you're like, she's either got to say it or she's going to give herself away. Mm. And I, yeah, I and felt, it becomes very tense at that yeah, point. It, it, it switches what, from like, again, over the top satire to like tense drama. But it sure. never really like gives you a gut punch, but it gives you a little, it, it makes you uncomfortable, not, and uh, not, um, uncomfortable to the point where you just don't want to stop watching it but you just um i i, I felt the film was a, a big exercise in restraint and i thought once you get to the ending it 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 it, 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 it arrived where it needed to arrive and um that's why i'm giving it a 10 because i agree with you it took a, a while <laughs> sorry yeah, I, I, well, I, spoiler well, spoiler i am giving it a 10 right. are you gonna but, skip over chris for the rest of this because you already give it a 10 no but no but uh, i'm understanding what you're saying but i'm explaining why i'm giving it a three I, I don't disagree i think it was a, the ending was phenomenal it's just yeah took a little while to get there i i, I want to point out that i think it's hilarious that in a movie about uh Hitler being an invisible or an imaginary never. friend who is eating a fucking unicorn head that you describe it as a, a film that is all about the restraint. But to a large extent, but, you're absolutely right. But the like, thing not, is, that gonna, wasn't a major thing. That was kind of like a, it was just a, like, a gag, really. Yeah. It was a gag, but it was like a, it was something that was set up and it was not anything that was drawn upon. They kind of flashed on it, it was like a, a four or five yeah. second thing on the screen. Yeah. Right, exactly. Through. They didn't take any of those jokes, which were all like on their own, outrage, like a lot of outrageous, <laughs> ridiculous jokes. So they didn't take any of them like over the point of, of they didn't overstay their welcome. I yes, guess. yes. And um, I will say, you know, outside of that, I, I thought that it was a pretty strong script. I'm, I'm kind of with you, Scott. I was, I was in it from the beginning. I'm trying to think of like any plot points that were not. 100% like they're covered well but like they re- this film the script does a great job of setting things up setting the pins up and then knocking them down at, at mm. all at the end you know like it's it, yeah. it does a phenomenal job of like preparing the audience for what is going to happen foreshadowing without making it too super obvious and like you know the the focus on the shoes uh, on on um Rosie's shoes throughout the movie is like so the payoff paid off is, so yeah, hard when, well. when you that's all you, from from his 10 year old vantage point you know she's hanging and all you can see are her shoes like that's freaking just an incredible plot beat there and he follows the butterfly there <laughs> yeah the butterflies in his stomach mm. like there's so many like paid off moments that mm-hmm. come in earlier in the movie so i i i probably gonna give this a three in fact i guess we've all had kind of our say at this point, so I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna give it a three unless somebody has like a last minute thing to knock it down. But uh, no, I think you guys convinced me. Like I said, it didn't take much convincing, but I think you're right. For on paper, it's not subtle, but in practice, it is. It, it is restrained, as you said, Chris. And I think they did hit all the plot beats. It all comes together excellently, as you mentioned at the end. And I personally was sold from the outset, anyways. So I think at this point, I'll bump it up and give it a full three, and we'll move on to themes, and that'll be you, Steve-O. Okay. Um. So there's obviously this theme of, you know, it's it's so such a strange movie because it's a movie about growing up, but there's this, you know, and there's the theme of that, like coming into the world as like a kid and kind of seeing 
the world for what it is, maybe for the first time, and like understanding that he's got like JoJo has to get past his reliance on Hitler, his imaginary friend, or like whatever it is that he's holding on to. Protection from of it, yeah. and and that like runs right alongside all of the heavy themes that you get in a movie about World War Two, and like especially set in Germany, and like kind of the propaganda that's being hmm. pushed to all the citizenry and the you know all of the um every, what i love about this uh, movie a lot too is like all these characters seem like real people in a society but they all have these fucking absolutely childish ideas of how yeah. uh like a war works or whatever like sam rockwell's character like you you see jojo's book that he's making about you know the jews or whatever and then you see other people like the uh uh steven merchant as the gestapo Gestapo. dude is like thrilled with it he's just like super happy like seeing and like you see um uh what's his name captain k rockwell's character design this ridiculous <laughs> uh, flamboyant uh, yeah, uniform this uniform and then wear it at the end like they're all just children like playing at war like while they're at home like it's it's such an interesting concept that happens in this in this film well yeah i mean that's what you said it's like the child is just of evil and war in a sense and, like literally as viewed through the eyes of a child who yes clearly has been indoctrinated in this uh ethos if you will and then struggling as you said Stevo, to actually grow up and get the blinders off of uh, you know, off of his eyes and off right. of his mind if you will and being forced to encounter something that he's told you know he finds Elsa pretty early on like I thought a lot of the movie would be like her hiding from him or something like sh- he discovers that his, his mother's uh, sheltering Elsa maybe like half an hour or so into the mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. and then on it's like then the uh, dynamic relationship between them so yeah I think it's all that stuff but, like you know his child is just a version of Hitler telling him like how to live his life and then being confronted by what reality actually is like yeah so all that like you said like are you there hitler it's me jojo like yeah that's funny but like it's still a coming of age tale and two people who are told that they, at least one of them are told that the other person isn't even a, a real person right. and realizing that we're all just human and trying to survive and uh, also dealing with loss and mm-hmm. war so i also feel that there's a big uh, about what defines a person mm. And especially in this day and age, there's a lot of discussion about identity and defining yourself by an ethos or a group that you identify with versus being yourself. And that's Jojo's path is him. Even though he does become a bit of his mother, which I think is a triumph because his mother was a perhaps one of the best like uh, like morally characters I've seen in a film recently. Um uh, just with a, such a passion for life and a passion for anything that we we like uh, embracing her identity as a person mm, and yeah, find Jojo fought the event that, but stripping off the idea like especially when um, uh, Elsa was in it uh, is that, like, you're not a Nazi you're a ten year old boy but that's the thing is you brought that up earlier with everyone else's no the, everyone else is fighting with kind of. Uh, they're wrestling what, with the what same they're thing. Su- yeah. what they're supposed to be uh, or what culturally they're pushed to be versus who they really are um, I mean Sam Rockwell both goes out on a s- great self-sacrifice and as his flamboyant mm-hmm. self yeah um, <laughs> uh, and I think that like, and the lost part is our GBC loses both his parent figures mm-hmm. over the course of the movie mm-hmm. uh, one sacrificing himself for uh, Jojo uh, to spare Jojo's life it's uh, uh it's a it's a very deep movie and i i respect everything it says and i think it really does do a good job of capturing everything it wants to really talk well. about yeah. i agree uh, the the one thing uh, the one of the things i really liked about it was that it, it really is in in a lot of ways an anti-war movie that when the Americans come in, they're not like the like the end of life is beautiful. They kind of come in the blonde haired, blue eyed, ironically enough. You know, it's all and these guys come in. They're waving the American flags and they're just pulling anybody who's got a uh, anything remotely like Nazi uniform, pulling them off to the side. Mm. Um, and Sam Rockwell's character, um, you know, sacrifices himself. He pulls the coat off him. He goes, "Jew, get out of here, Jew!" And they just to get him out. Like you said, um, about it, it is a great film about identity. I mean, that is an onion we can point. peel just 
just on identity in this movie. Mm. And two things that came to my took notes while you were talking in. One is um, Elsa to go, to go with the the themes of like you have um, Hitler being Jojo's ideal of what he should be. Her immediately pointing out that you're a ten year old, not a Nazi. But yet, when she talks to him, she's conveying like, "Yes, my horns. You don't get your horns until you're twenty one." She's yeah. she's sort of trolling him in a sense, but she's totally into trolling his prejudices. But she's totally trolling him. Yeah. Um, but as the film goes on, she can't do that as much, and you know, obviously, he's not pressing it as much. And it was really interesting at the end where he was like, he told her a lie and said that the um, you know, the Germans had won the war. And on the one hand, you're not sure if he was doing it out of anger, fear, or if he's trying to protect her from the unknown. Oh, I no, think he, he was trying was to selfish. Yeah. He was trying to keep her there. Yeah, yeah. But, or, but like you said, or selfish because she, he had lost his mom. But the other thing, um, well, first of all, to your point, the way the film is marketed, um, I, I thought it was going to be a weekend at youth Hitler camp. I really yeah. thought, I also, said I thought it was going to be that. Right? I had no yeah. idea it was going to be like this, but it's another thing of identity and what was phenomenal. And what I think is actually Scarlett Johansson's best role where he's like, you miss your father. And she comes over and she puts ash on her face yeah, yeah. and he goes that over really and slams her fist on the table. Like, you know, you, you know, you know, disrespect your mother or whatever she said. And you're, I'm waiting for the abusive alcoholic father. And it wasn't that she simulated them dancing in a family hug. And it just is just, you know, a total film about identity. I just wanted to take a couple points that I had when you were talking about that, because all the other themes are great. But the identity is like a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing that goes through this. Yeah, true. Yes. So clearly giving it a one. Did you have anything else to want to say, Sivo? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I'll give just, it a strong one. I'll just cap uh, off like it handles all that stuff really well. And. It's sort of like, not unexpected, but the fact that it's able to talk about identity, talk about the the, the World War II era, like things that we all are familiar with, without I, being too in your face about it. Good. Actually, I do want to make it, because you did mention the war angle there. That is one of the best absurd uh, war scenes I've seen in a very long time. <laughs> yeah. When the German shepherds yeah. pick up guns. <laughs> literal, the literal German shepherds. That's <laughs> a great yes. egg, too. Yes. Shepherds from but Germany. The, the fact that they had a call back to it later on yeah. for an entirely different kind of joke. <laughs> the was German brilliant. shepherds was brilliant. I was trying to remember yeah. where I'd heard that from today. Mm -hmm. But yeah, good uh, call. Uh, but like the entire thing of like sending kids off to war and all that, it, it worked. It, it, it was I, I like a good absurdist take on war. Mm -hmm. And, and this was this, pretty top notch. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. So it's ones all around, and let's go on to antagonists, and that shall be you, Chris. All right. This one I was also taking notes um, because uh, this is uh, an anti war movie, you know, so you could say that, you know, the, the whole world created by war, you know, is a thing. You know, obviously they're, they're go to Nazis. When you brought up identity, that opened up a whole can of worms for me because I immediately was just like, well, this is the movie Eighth Grade, which is a wonderful movie that we saw last year. Um, oh, wow, this is Eighth Grade in, in, in world Germany. Germany. Because there were so many of the same themes that came through it because there's a whole... But about 100% less awkwardness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was much less awkward than that movie was. Sure. Um, no, but the thing is, it, it is the same thing. You're living, you're, you're, you're looking to your peers um, there's a whole thing where, you know, Joe just talking to, um, Yorkie in the tent and he's just like, you know, who's your best friend? He goes, Hitler. He goes, well, I thought I was your best friend. He goes, well, you're my second best friend. I mean, there's this whole thing about growing up. So, so yeah. there is, there is that whole, um, again, there's, there's no one persona of an antagonist but there's all the elements all these myriad ones kind yeah. of that, yeah, yeah that I form mean, like from, a, you, yeah. from the fanatic, from, you know, the person like, um, uh, uh, Re uh, Rebel Wilson Wilson's character. You expected her to be the comic relief, and she's like one of the darkest characters because she's a true believer. She is passing along the Infowars things, and she mm. believes it. She really believes it, and you're laughing at it at first, and then you're realizing when she's sending kids out to suicide bombs. So, I mean, there's uh, the antagonism is not any one thing, but it's a bunch of disparate things, yes. and it's touching upon fanaticism. It's touching upon identity. It's touching upon war. Um, you know, obviously growing up, because we all know that, you know, it, growing up can suck too. You're all not so one but, point. But, but the thing is when you're, but in a way growing up is kind of like everybody, you're marching into battle. You, you go into, if you're having a shitty, if you're, if you're a fat kid with glasses, like I was, and you're going to school, I mean, school's a fucking battle zone. You want to get the fuck, you know what I'm saying is it's sort of the, they handle all these things. Mm. 
really well. I mean, like I said, there's no one persona, but there's a bunch of disparate things. But but sort I, of combine into a but 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 it, w- but it was enough to provide motivation. It was enough to keep me on my my seat. And it was enough to give me the pathos. Um, so I'm giving it a one. So I figured since you said you were giving it a ten, I already put it yeah. to one. But all good points, Cody. I'm gonna say perhaps personify the best is imaginary Adolf Hitler, in that. It almost like the snake like character. Mm-hmm. You have to kill your heroes. Yes. I'm a firm I knew believer you were bring in that. The story you're. Uh, uh, also, I, obviously, life during wartime <laughs> is the uh, great enemy. But I think that uh, Adolf Hitler here represents uh, him initially buying into the system. Yeah. Of and course. then that fall of. Uh, and then the, the maturity it. of him in rejecting that. Exactly. And I think that. If I'm going to personify it as one kind of antagonist, it is because that's what he has to literally kick Hitler out of a window <laughs> yeah. and uh, literally kill his imaginary. Yeah, yeah that's a really good him. point yeah. to to say that his imaginary Hitler, the ideals, mm-hmm. are, are the that's a really good. Well, that's exactly what Invisible it is. Hitler. Like the the Hitler in this movie is basically the personification, the imaginary personification of the specter of Nazism. That's like. That pervades just, Jojo's that mind. Just, yeah, yeah. it's just for you know, you can see it in all of the characters, but like obviously Jojo is the one that we get closest to. But uh, yeah, it just it's like a it's like a specter that settles over the over the entire town, which is where we spend most of the movie. But like, and and, and what I what I like about that is like it feels like fighting against the antagonist every time any of these characters makes like a little. Uh, has like a little moment of joy or like the you know when when um rosie starts dancing um you know things like that i i, I think that it because i was trying to figure this out i was like do, do, do i think that jojo felt or do i think that there is like one antagonist i'm not sure hitler is like absolutely the closest that you get um but I feel like everybody in this movie has their own in some way imaginary hitler right like sure as their <laughs> Everybody in real life has their imaginary <laughs> yeah. Hitler. You got the imaginary Hitler on your shoulder. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think that I am. When you ride alone, you're still thing. riding with Hitler. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to give a pretty strong uh, Hitler my co pilot. Uh, so you're giving it a one, Steve O. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't have much more to add. You guys said it all pretty much. It all combines really well. And it's, it's all, again, all very deftly handled that all these things sort of meld together to create mm. the, an antagonistic projection and literally a projection of Hitler himself. Yeah, the film does a really good job. Great script, as you mentioned, Stevo, and we're all giving Antag a one. That'll bring me moving along to protagonist. So uh, Roman G. Davis, I believe, is his name. Roman Griffin Davis. I just wrote down G. Uh, but Roman Griffin Davis. Yeah, him as Jojo, German last name. I don't. They only said it a couple of times, but I think he did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. I think he's clearly our protagonist, and as as we mentioned earlier, filled out that it's his growing up story. He just happens to be growing up in. As a Hitler youth in, in at the end days of World War Two in in Berlin, so I mean I think he did a fantastic job for a child actor just in general. Like if you're familiar with my thoughts on children in general, but I think he was top notch for sure. And so yes, thank you, thank you, my. Have friends. you read my book on children? Oh, oh, rephrase. <laughs> Tell them that I hate them is the subtitle. But um, in this case, I think he he fucking just killed this role. I don't know what to say. Like it was, I love following his story, and like you said, Chris, I thought most a lot, a lot of the movie was going to be his like uh, journeys, his adventures through the training camp and stuff. But like even, the movie even subverts that because he he's so fanatical about it, he injures himself with a grenade, and then can, can no longer yeah be the, the of service, teaser if you will. the teaser of the movie is what we all thought the movie was yeah. going to be. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you might. I don't know if you can make an argument that Elsa's protagonist, like... It's Jojo's story. It's, mm. uh, I, I would tend to think so as well. Yeah. So, in that case, I'm definitely giving uh, Roman a very strong one as Jojo. He just filled out that character. It was believable. It's, I believe a 10-year-old kid who was indoctrinated with this shit, like, would be doing this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, that's my thoughts on it. A pretty strong one for the role of Jojo by Roman Griffith Davis. Nothing further to say for me? Yeah, yep. giving it a one. I'm Please. just going to add one thing. For somebody who sometimes is lenient, I have very few times in the years that we've been doing this say that there's a perfect protagonist. I think I've said it actually once this year. He is the perf- mm. is a perfect protagonist. I mean, it was his story, but he was the blood, soul, 
in 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 Psyche, he was the perfect protagonist. Bold statement. I am going to say I'm not going to go that far, but I did <laughs> like him quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that the performance was great, yes. and just his character arc was phenomenal. Well, to be fair, Chris, I see how you identify with him as you both grew up as Hitler Youth. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And now in, Chris in World War II Germany, if you're listening to this, Chris Germany. almost spit out his drink at that. <laughs> But anyway, so that means you're giving it a one as well, I assume, Steve-O. Yeah. And all of us. All right. So here's a fun one, E. Speaking of, um, mm-hmm. continue talking about the secondary and supporting uh, characters. I was shocked by the cast in here. And how I had no idea Sam Rock was in this yeah. movie until he showed up. Uh, or I, I saw him in the credits. Uh, uh, no, I, I didn't even read the credits. <laughs> uh, he just showed up for a scene. I'm like... Sam Rockwell, I hope you're in the right. Oh, he's in the entirety of the movie. And yeah. All, oh, but I have to say, I think, Chris, you said it earlier, uh, Scarlett Johansson yeah, was the heart and soul of this movie. I think it is her best role. Uh, I would actually like to see her get a, a, at least a nod for uh, Best Supporting Actress mm-hmm. or Best Actress, however. Anyways, she did a phenomenal job. And yep. uh, Sam Rockwell, uh, with his kind of... Uh, uh, like lazy, but like um, uh, like just, a kind of character that he, he plays this character. He's played this character before, in yeah. a sense. He's just disenchanted. He's like really he's, disenchanted. Yeah. Is sort of a bitter think. veteran. Yeah, his disillusion, as you said, with the with what's you know, but, his party. He plays this role perfectly. Um, Theon Greyjoy, without many speaking lines, <laughs> uh, did a lot of good, like kind of a uh, Alfie uh, Allen is his actual yeah, name. But. I'm sorry, I will forever remember him as Theon Greyjoy. <laughs> sure. Did a lot of great comment, like um, expression comedy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know. Like overall, I have to say, like I'm going to leave the rest for you guys, but I have to say, like this was a solid uh, cast. Yeah, I already said Rebel Wilson, so that I'm going to stick with that. But I'm going to add something to Sam Rockwell's character. What I liked about him right off the bat, and this will, as we find out that he's less than thrilled with this, is right away. He's like, I was on the front line and lost an eye, so now I'm here teaching. He goes, and butts. apparently, I no longer qualified yeah, to fight on the front line. Do I need an eye to do this? <laughs> yeah, but, 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 can a man do this? Yeah. Towards the students. I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I totally. Like, that was brilliant. But it does show you once again how disposable people are. You live up to this ideal, and all of a sudden, he's relegated to teaching nursery school. JoJo's relegated to putting up signs and dressing up like a robot. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm just saying that right off the bat, and I totally forgot about the. Teaching. I hope they actually did that. In- in uh, Germany at the end of it. No, but I just, I just wanted to, I just wanted to add to Samuel Rockwell. He was a great um, uh, example of how you throw away people when they're no longer use. Yeah, sure. I mean, I agree. Yes, it's always great to see Sam Rockwell. I, for some whatever reason or another, I didn't know he was in this movie until I saw his name in the credits. And quickly, he's the uh, trainer, the, the camp uh, sort of right. Overwatch guy. And uh, I will say that um, I'll leave one or two for you guys. Yes, ScarJo was amazing. I agree. Like. She just just killed that role as well. Mm-hmm. The chemistry between her and um and Roman as JoJo was fantastic as mm-hmm. well. I had to give a shout out to um Archie Yates as Yorkie because uh, JoJo's best friend like who showed up like here and there like he sort of you think they're gonna like sort of do this adventure together and then they, they like they him would have if he wasn't shipped off to war yeah yeah and then he comes back <laughs> right? it's like again as a hardened veteran this movie is like a fucking case study in amazing callback jokes mm-hmm. yeah right. So that was pretty good. And of course, we had to give um, Tamsin, I believe I'm pronouncing right, T- Tamosin McKenzie, who played Elsa. Mm-hmm. She's also very spot on. Like, uh, I love their dynamic as well when she starts, like like you said, Chris, she's showing them over, like, the uh, the features of the Jewish people and like, just messing with them with, like, ridiculous stuff. <laughs> and, like, yeah. And, like, and then I believe totally their friendship and that JoJo fell in love with her at, by the end. Like, if I were JoJo, I would have had a huge crush on her as well <laughs> in that situation. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, but the, the, actually, that trifecta of yes. Scarlett Johansson, uh, JoJo, and uh, uh, Elsa, Elsa. Uh, uh, um, Mackenzie, or whatever. oh, they, their their relationship was perfect. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And for all that, I'm given supporting a very strong one. They, uh, yeah, I completely agree. I have one other person to name, but like I, I wanted to mention briefly that I almost mm. forgot there about Elsa forgot. in this in terms of this question because. Like, in my mind, she's just, like, the part of the main triad, which I guess uh, Rosie Scar- 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 Johansson's character I guess you could is say that could also be a, case, a secondary yeah. character and does a very good job. But, uh, like, those three, and I know, jo- and I do agree that JoJo is the main protagonist, but, like, I see those three as, like, 
I don't even almost view them as secondary characters. Just, they're yeah, they're like, like sort of so in between both. To yeah, the, I, to I the get you. thrust of the movie. Mm. But I did want to mention, I did want to give Stephen Merchant a shout out as the Gestapo guy. I think his name was Dirtz. Sure. He was uh, only there briefly, but he was still pretty good. Yeah. Just moment. comes in, like I mentioned earlier, has this like moment of pure joy discovering uh, JoJo's uh, book. Ridiculous book I about. like Stephen Merchant, but it was kind of distracting. Because you know it's him. Because he's so uh, tall. <laughs> no, well, yes, but it's also it's like ah, oh, Stephen Merchant's in this. I I can't buy him as a character. Anything but <laughs> Stephen Merchant, yeah. sure. Yeah, which is a good thing and it's a fine, but bad yeah. thing at the same time. Yeah, I don't know. I I uh, <laughs> I did uh, I did enjoy his, but I get I get what you mean about that. But that that's all to say that the it's really funny. a bunch of really strong supporting characters mm, in this film for and, sure. Uh, I'm going to give it a super strong one. Did you have something to add, Chris? Sorry. Yeah, just two quick things. Number one, when uh, I've been watching a lot of uh, Old Sunny, so when when the when the Gestapo first showed up and I saw Stephen Merchant, I thought, oh look, the Mapo- Nick Poyles are here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jesus. Um, but um, but uh, just speaking to the dynamic of Elsa, uh, Rosie, and um, Jojo, Jojo, I love the fact that everybody had a secret. There's like a pairing secrets. Mm-hmm. Like mm. they, nobody could tell the other person that they knew about the other one. So Rosie was the most in the dark, but I just, I, to your dynamic, I love the fact that it, it's like to keep everybody strong, they had to be separate in it. Like there's no way everybody That's could. So, and it's great. Me. It's great when, uh, when uh, Jojo goes over all that, <laughs> like to her, yeah. like, <laughs> what she's she's talking about it. you know, like, I don't want you to cut my head off. I thought it was one of the last ones. He's like, Here's all the reasons for why we can't tell anybody about yeah. anything. Why I have to keep this sort of like yeah. uh, balance. There's actually one I forgot. I guess we have to give Taika himself, who played Hitler. Like, True. Uh, That's, he is. He uh, was in the music part. Like, yeah. He, Although I counted him as the antagonist. so that doesn't, Fair enough, yeah. I guess. But I'm just saying, like him being that role was pretty good mm-hmm. because he also wrote and directed uh, this movie as well. Unlike Stephen Merchant. I completely you could see bought, him as uh, yeah. Yeah. Taika. Uh, he really got into the role yeah. as like... As like a ten year old's version of Hitler, right? <laughs> yeah, like, for sure. Um, so like, and as you mentioned, Chris, I expected him to, him to be that character like there a lot. He wasn't in it as much as I thought it was gonna be, and that was a perfect choice of them. Yes. So yeah, so well used there. Great cast, great secondary characters, ones all around. Hitler showed up when he needed to be there, <laughs> as he always does. <laughs> he How many of these jokes can we do? <laughs> you got one more left, maybe. <laughs> but let let us move on to dialogues, uh, and that'll be you, Stevo. Yeah, uh, very, very, very strong dialogue. This is what I mean. And this is something that you expect from a movie that is you would think, and yeah. written by Taika Waititi. Um, he is known for like having this tight, like really good dialogue and and just like just really funny and yeah, fucking observations hilarious. about like the strange situations. Like you know, he did what we do in the shadows, the movie before this, and it's like obviously they're very different subject matter, but. They have the same kind of feeling of like it, this is just a completely bizarre take on a on something p- that has normally setting, yeah. been more dramatic and like more serious, uh, which you know he has a really good eye for something like that. He even did the same thing in Thor to an extent, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Um, but so uh, and I know I'm talking more about uh, his directorial style perhaps than oh, the dialogue. Are tight there. Yeah. But like but the dialogue is so spot on. He weaves uh drama and uh comedy into this so well. I'm gonna give it a strong one. I'm interested to see because I know that a lot of his work prior to this has had a lot of um improv in it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think this had too much improv. Maybe they allowed Rockwell to go say off a couple a different things bit, or whatever. But I, I feel like this was actually a uh, because it's also based off a novel. I believe I saw in the introductory credits. Yeah, it oh, is. that's great. Yeah. I'm actually wondering that. that either way. Um, but okay. So again, uh, I'm not discrediting uh, the director, like, in the, um, because obviously his style was in the uh, dialogue. But I'm just interested to see how much was pulled from the book and how much was improv and how much yeah. was his. But regardless of uh, where that falls, it was still perfect. Yeah, I mean, I, I was one of the tightest scripts that I've seen this year and it was it was the perfect um thing for him to, material for Taika to work with like his touch on it is unmistakable and made it fantastic I have nothing to add I'm just gonna give it a one uh, okay. but the but the author of the book is uh, <laughs> but you can't say I have nothing but to I add. must <laughs> add this no I was complete because you said you didn't know who wrote the book and I was about to tell you it's oh. Christine Loren uh Lure- Lunens Lunens I'm fucking it up good uh, to know 
L E U N E N S. I was answering your question. Got you. Look up Christine Lunens. Got you, but you're giving it a one as well. Yep. All right, Chris. Well, now you can, in fact, go on with style. <laughs> okay. Um, I loved the style of this film. Um, first of all, I have got to before I forget. Um, give a shout out once again to Michael Giacchino, uh, providing a really nice score. Um, the uh, editions of the Beatles music and the Bowie music and Dude, all, the, all the famous pop songs in German, all in fantastic. German, which is fantastic. But I mm-hmm. really, one of the things that got me in this film is Tito Waikiti's framing of shots is incredible. Yep. It, I mean, it is, I just, it, there's one scene in particular where um, Elsa and um, Jojo are talking in the room and they're kind of on opposite ends, and there's, this, you know, just the the wall, and I think the door, the door to the cu- uh, crawl space is open. Um, Wiki, well, he frames these shots so beautifully. I mean, it, the, it's just a joy to just, uh, it's just such a joy to watch um, the way he lines things up. Um, I mean, uh, you know, not, to, I mean, and then there's the whole thing, like. The, the, here's a great thing. The, the little things that I, I really loved were the, you know, the what I, I mentioned before when the Allies come, when the Americans come in, and it's not all like they're they're glorified. The thing that I love is one of the little nuances to Rosie was they're riding their bikes, and she's basically telling them, you know, like war sucks, this thing, and she just told them that like you know she wants the Allies to win and all this stuff, and then there's a bunch of wounded German mm. soldiers coming back from the front. This movie broke me, <laughs> so, um, but she's just like, welcome home, boys, and it's just such a great little flavor. A nice little moment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. great. So the, he he balances this movie really, really well. It's shot beautifully. I'm giving this a superbly, incredibly strong one. Yeah, I mean, the soundtrack was fantastic. Uh, I, I, I've i seen that done a couple of times here here and there, but I think this one is the best like iteration of when they do like German versions, like if... They have owned the war, but I'll say this: I also agree 100 percent. The blocking, the framing, he's a great director. And in this one, particularly, what I noticed was a very nice, vibrant color palette. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, in terms of like given the setting oh, and color the story. Was so, yeah, right. Oh, so like there was all that stuff, and like and the, the funny gags. Like for example, there's a quick uh, another great callback Brit joke, if you will. Um, when Jojo's talking to imaginary Hitler, Hitler goes, oh, "I have to go home. I'm, I'm having unicorn for dinner." <laughs> like it comes out of nowhere. You're like what? And then like. Later on in the film, he's talking to Hitler again while Jojo's eating, and Hitler's eating a fucking dead unicorn head. And it's not really commented upon it. It's just there, right? Mm-hmm. And there's so many other moments like that, like set up and then pay off in a perfect way. And yeah, style all around was just fantastic. I think this might be my favorite movie of his that he directed. Agreed. I, I agree with you because it showed a maturation, I think, in and his ability, as you were mentioning... Although I feel that the pacing, personally, the pacing was Just off, and that's why off, yeah. I gave it uh, uh, mm-hmm. a two from mm-hmm. the beginning. But the switch between a c- comedy to a satire to a drama to a tragedy to an abs- to w- absurdist war, yeah. the way he was able to f- uh, seamlessly transition from genre to genre and make it so it's the impact of especially towards the end when everything starts falling apart in both the third reich and in jojo's life yeah. um it, it it's it's uh like it's so deftly done that i i i i think he has put a standard down to where his game is and i think mm. that it uh i'm looking forward to seeing everything he does from now on yeah, yeah, very nicely put. I feel like we've been saying that about a, a bunch of directors lately, and I'm really <laughs> excited for what film is going to do uh, in the future, you know. Um, but this is another one. Like, so we, about three quarters of the way through the year, like in September or whatever, we were talking about how this wasn't a super Kind of a slow year, year yeah, yeah. And, like, in the last couple of months, I've seen four, like, really good movies, and, like, probably none or Mad Max, one of them will be in the running An Oscar, for, but still. Uh, like a Best Picture Oscar, but they're, they're movies that are like reaching for something, and and like a lot of my complaints about film um, lately has been that it has 
been kind of stale. Sort of middle of the road, times, like whatever, yeah. With a lot of the superhero movies and whatnot. But like, anyway, that being said, style in this movie is fantastic. You guys have mentioned pretty much all the things that I was going to say. Uh, a- an extra shout out for the soundtrack, mm. just because it's like so perfectly done. I think that, I feel like I think uh, Taika or whoever decided on what the final songs that made it onto this were going to be. Yeah. I must have spent so much time like <laughs> deliberating over what the perfect version of this song is and like Yeah. You know. I was like choice of songs and where they put them in the film was I, I do have to mention it opens up with a juxtaposition between the Beatles and Nazi rallies. And Nazi rallies. Yeah. And it is so bold and such a decoration of what this yeah, it's like going here's what you're be. in for. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well said. Good call. All right, so that's ones all around, very high ones for style. And it'll bring me home to recommendation. Fucking A, yeah. Fuck off Hitler. Jojo Rabbit's awesome. Um, I mean, like I said, we were looking forward to this film once we discovered it, and it was finally playing in our area. And I just had a lot of fun with it. Was it the most amazing piece of film I've seen this year? No, but it's damn good. It's damn enjoyable. It's like, the th- this is the thing for me, and probably just all of us here in general, right? The pedigree it has behind it, the, the cast it has with it, just masterfully handled, I thought. And I'm looks like I'm ending up giving a 10. I don't know if it's a perfect 10 movie, but I certainly recommend it. I think many people will enjoy it. It's, it's, it's a little bit different. I just see what's trying something different. It's ambitious. It's out there, but I think it hits almost all of its marks, given that. So I'm very highly recommending Jojo Rabbit. All right. Uh, is it dangerous out there? Extremely. And, and it, uh, I fully recommend this. I got emotional during this. I know, Chris, you did as well. And I don't, many movies don't hit that trigger with me, but the, mm. when Jojo starts it's becoming the best of his mother towards the end, in a sense of personality-wise, it really touched me. And I agree that it's not a 10 movie, but I certainly think it's a 9 movie. No. Yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing. I don't know if I think that it's a perfect movie. I'm giving it a 10. I don't know if I think that it's a perfect movie, but it is really good. And like, it does like if you want to see one of the top movies of the year that you are also oddly enough at a World War II movie centering around Hitler, going to have a lot of fun at as well. You don't like, hear that sentence every day. Wanna, if you want to watch like a piece of fucking art that will be studied in like you know film school in the next ten years, go watch Lighthouse. Mm-hmm. But this, but this, I mean isn't like this could be up there in that regard as well it'd be nice so. if it's oscar film i'm not sure if it could quite make the cut but like i said regardless just backing up final thought is yeah it's a damn good enjoyable film and if you're into this stuff it's gonna it's definitely gonna entertain you to a high degree yeah um you first of all the film industry and steven spielberg if you want people to stop watching Netflix and want a good movie <laughs> make put films kind of movies, like this yeah. out stop rebooting stop remaking and all that bullshit fuck that um, with that said, this is such a treat this year that we got um, Ari Aster, um, Eggers, Edgers, and actually, I you know Jordan I don't Peele. think I don't mm-hmm. Jordan Peele and um, and now Taika the, the the guy who did Joker, Bong Joon Ho. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. I'm blocking him. Well, but I mean, no, it was Parasite. Uh, yeah, well, uh, that's what I mean. uh, well, I didn't see uh, Parasite yet, which I really yeah, want that's to. The director, that's but yeah. uh, but with regard yeah, to the guy did the Phillips, Hangover. Todd Phillips. <laughs> you Todd Phillips, right. So, you know, um, but in terms of this is, without question, my favorite film of the year. I personally think it's a perfect film. And my top three films of the year, without question, are is this one. And then in a close second, Ty would be Midsummer and, and The Lighthouse. Sure. Because, I mean, you have these three filmmakers. I mean, I'm not saying that Todd Phillips and um, – I don't want to take anything away from Jordan Peele or Todd Phillips because, you know, they're both – you know, they did both – outstanding job but these three films are just raise the the bar so high this is what people you know us and joker and these three films are what we should be seeing in the theater and not a bunch of recycled bullshit so i'm giving this the highest uh, this is definitely in my top three of the year okay um, probably top five now that I just mentioned it. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, we'll regroup when we get the Oscars, but you're saying personally for you, you it's absolutely love it. Yeah. And I absolutely love this film. And this is what we should be seeing in the movie. It is such a treat that I can say five films this year huh. broke the mold. Yeah, very nice. I agree. All right. Any final thoughts and recommendation? I think we just praise it pretty highly. Yeah. So I'll give out the final scores. Uh, three of us have given it tens, myself, uh, Chris and Steve-O. And just under that, Ian, you gave it a nine, as you said. 
and that brings it to a 9.7, very, very highly uh, rated. Yeah, I think that's about right. Like I said, I while we gave it 10s, it's not a perfect movie in my mind, but on our scale, hit all the points. I gave it all the credit, and I think E sort of collectively maybe deducted any like our hesitancy mm, yeah. off the plot. And other than that, we thought everything else about it was wonderfully done, mm. and that's why it stands at 9.7. Go see Jojo Rabbit. It's yeah. fucking sweet. I want to see it again. Is he, is he any of those five films I mentioned? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so I think that'll do it. I think the war has come to a close, and we shall uh, leave. Uh, ha- take our leave. I've been Scott Thurlow here with Jonathan Ian Manzer. This ain't no party. This ain't no disco. <laughs> Say it in German. This not the food in the round. That's Stephen Amosi. Doctor. And Chris Morgan. Jeremy Baramy. Good night. See you next time. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Or mods? <laughs>